Hi, my name is Tom Bruton, and I'm a PhD student here in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at UC Berkeley. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my research looking at activated persulfate as a means of remediation of contaminants in groundwater. My work is part of Project 6 at the UC Berkeley Superfund Center, uh, whose overall goal is to develop and test new methods for treating contaminants that are difficult to treat using existing technologies. One of the methods by which uh, engineers and scientists treat contaminated groundwater is known as in situ chemical oxidation, or ISCO for short. Oxidation is just a fancy word for saying uh, breakdown or transformation of chemicals into forms that may be less harmful to us. And the term in situ refers to the fact that in ISCO, this treatment happens in place in the aquifer without the need for excavation or pumping of the groundwater to the surface. So in a typical ISCO treatment, oxidant solution is added into the aquifer where it then reacts with contaminants, uh, degrading those contaminants in place, and ideally leading to reduced toxicity or risk. This figure on the right should help you understand a little bit better what I'm talking about. It's a picture of the subsurface and the, the pink and red areas have been affected by a pollutant spill. This could be uh, a chlorinated solvent, for example, that's leaked from a tank. In ISCO, a series of injection wells are drilled. These are represented by the, the green lines. They're drilled down into the aquifer, and oxidant solution is added to them uh, so that it can mix with the contaminants and react with them and degrade them in place. There are a variety of different oxidants that have been used in ISCO treatments, and specifically the one that I'm looking at is known as persulfate. Persulfate has the chemical formula S2O8, which is two sulfur molecules bonded to uh, eight oxygens, and it comes as a salt that dissolves easily in water. The tricky part about persulfate is that in order for it to be effective, it must first be activated into another species known as sulfate radical. Uh, when persulfate is activated to sulfate radical, the sulfate radicals rapidly react with any other chemicals that are around, including the pollutants that we're uh, attempting to eliminate. This activation step happens very slowly on its own, but we know that by adding heat, UV light, uh, or a certain metal catalyst, we can speed up the reaction. Unfortunately, none of these uh, additions are easy to do in ISCO when we're trying to do all of this underground. We do know, however, that trace amounts of metals such as iron and manganese exist in subsurface aquifer sediments and that these can potentially serve as good catalysts for persulfate activation. So one of the research questions I've been pursuing is whether persulfate can be activated passively using naturally occurring aquifer sediments as catalysts. This slide shows the results of some experiments that I've done in the laboratory using sediments from an aquifer in San Diego. Uh, I prepared various solutions of persulfate and monitored the reaction of um, persulfate to sulfate radical over time in the presence of different amounts of the sediment. What the plot shows is that as the amount of sediment present increased, the persulfate activation rate also increased. What this tells us is that persulfate is activated by the aquifer sediments and that the sediment is an effective catalyst for activation. Knowing this is important because it, uh, it points the way to possible persulfate treatments that can happen without the need for extra activators. And this could result in cleanups that are cheaper and more effective. Now that we understand that persulfate can be activated passively by naturally occurring aquifer sediments, there are a couple other research questions that I'm trying to answer. The first one is uh, trying to understand what properties of the sediments affect the activation process. The second question is what the rate and efficiency of the reaction between sulfate radical and different contaminants that are present in aquifer sediments uh, are, how those rates compare. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and I hope I was able to give you a, a good understanding of the work that I'm doing with Persulfate ISCO here at the UC Berkeley Superfund Center.